Hi, I'm excited to be here. My name is Chris Lambert. I'm the Chief Technology Officer with Lyft. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about our journey from being a small, scrappy startup in San Francisco to now being the fastest growing provider of on-demand transportation here in the US. Along the way, I'll highlight how Amazon Web Services has helped us move faster as a company and scale our marketplace more efficiently. I'll start back in 2012. When Lyft launched, it was a really simple service uh, for rides on demand. You could pull out your phone, hit a button, and within a few minutes, a driver would show, you up, show up and take you anywhere you wanted to go. When we launched, it was just three servers, all running in US East, in different availability zones. Uh, and our first, very first Lyft ride was completed on May 31st, 2012. And it's funny, because the two engineers that had built the, the first prototype weren't really sure how it was going to work in production. Would it actually, would the state machine work? Would the ride actually happen? So when they, they, they were tailing logs, and when they saw the ride drop-off event uh, hit production, they were like, well, maybe it worked. We actually don't know. Uh, so they, they called the driver, and they said, hey, this is Lyft. Did you drop Daryl off? And the driver's like, yeah, he's, I just dropped him off. He's not in the car. And they're like, OK, great, thanks. And I don't know who was more surprised, like the engineers that this worked or the driver that they're going to get a phone call after every single drop off <laughs> asking if they dropped him off. But it was really early on. It was three weeks from, from idea to actual launch. Uh, and we were 100% on AWS at the time. The only difference now, we're still 100% on AWS, but we're taking advantage of many more Amazon technologies besides EC2. So fast forward a year, we had our first big milestone as a company. One million rides completed. <clears throat> San Francisco was going like crazy. We had launched Los Angeles and a few other cities, and, and things were just taking off. You can get an idea of what that growth looks like um, with just looking at the first 15 months here with our, our path to one million rides. And this has continued for the, the last four years. However, that exponential growth is great, but it didn't prepare us for what was about to happen. We decided to launch 24 additional cities in 24 hours. Uh, this was a huge effort across the company, marketing, operations, engineering. And of course, the engineering approach to this problem was, well, let's just let's get out of the way. Let's enable auto scaling. Let's make it so whatever happens in the real world, whether it's a rainstorm or the Super Bowl, Anything that happens, we can handle. Our infrastructure should just scale up seamlessly. Uh, so we rolled out auto scaling just in time for our 24 city launch, went off without a hitch. We doubled our footprint overnight. Uh, and you can just see how significant this is. That last little tick there was all in 24 hours. Uh, and that was uh, pretty massive growth for us as a company. And auto scaling works great for your application tier, but um, there's one more benefit you get from it, which is that we do eight times as many rides at peak on a Saturday night as we're doing on a Sunday morning. So auto scaling also allows us to scale down our infrastructure to save a significant amount on infrastructure costs when we don't need to pay for it. So I mentioned auto scaling application tier. That's fantastic. But what about data store? One of our biggest data stores was outgrowing its current technology, and we decided to move it to Dynamo. This was the ride location tracking system. So every GPS location for all of our rides was stored in this system. We moved it over to Dynamo, and it was so simple to scale up. You had two knobs, one for write capacity, one for read capacity. You didn't have to carry a pager. You didn't have to deal with chunk migrations. Uh, it just worked really, really well. And we've since moved many of our other data stores over to Dynamo as well. The single biggest launch in Lyft's history came a few months later. This was LiftLine. LiftLine is our shared ride service. What that means is if two passengers have a very similar route and they're requesting a ride within a few minutes of each other, we can give them the option to share that ride with the other passenger for a significant savings, often up to 50% off their ride. This changed our business significantly, and it was possible because of some analysis that our data science team did with our Amazon Redshift data warehouse. So we had all of our data in Redshift, and they basically would run simulations every few months looking at what would be possible in terms of new transportation modes. And they realized that 90% of our rides at peak times were co-similar enough to another ride where we could actually build this shared rides product. So as soon as this was the case, we kicked off a few engineering teams, and we were able to launch LiftLine August 2014. And it's been the biggest driver of growth in our biggest markets, uh, and is, is the future of the company. 
And fast forward a year, we now have a proliferation of many different microservices, all serving production traffic at Lyft. And we wanted a really easy, simple way for them to communicate with each other. And we built this pub subsystem on top of Amazon Kinesis that funnels every single production event uh, through this system. So every time you open the app, every time you request a ride, uh, every time you move, the car actually moves. It goes through this, this Kinesis pipeline. And any other service at Lyft can subscribe for events. They can say, I care about uh, credit card ad. So our fraud system can say, let me know anytime someone adds a new payment method, removes a payment method. I want to rescore that user's fraud risk. Um, our dynamic pricing system can say, let me know every time a driver changes neighborhoods, because I want to make sure I'm pricing these rides as accurately as possible. This is a really complex infrastructure with a lot of moving parts, and it's all simple for us because of Kinesis. October 2015 was three, you know, three years after we launched, huge milestone, billion dollar annual run rate. Business is just bigger than it's ever been. To give you a sense of scale, right now there are over 10,000 people in Lyft rides across the country. Um, for them, they're get, getting to work, seeing friends, seeing family, relying on Lyft for their, their income. Uh, downtime is not an option for us, and we've been able to depend on a a AWS to provide the level of reliability and, and um, availability that our users have come to expect from Lyft. So I talked a little bit about the services we have in production. On March 2016th, we added our 100th microservice. These are all, again, managed independently, scaled automatically. Uh, and these services are collectively serving over a million requests per second. This is what powers Lyft. Every time you request a ride, you're not just hitting a single service. You're probably hitting 10 or 20 different services that are working together to make that ride go as smooth as possible. And just to give you a, a little bit of insight, this is the, the set of Amazon services we're using today in production. These are all taking real traffic. Teams have depended on them, uh, and they, they've all worked really, really well for us over the last four years. So last big announcement. I'm excited to say, as of last month, we completed 14 million rides. Just for context, it took us 15 months, 15 months to get to our first million. And in the last month, we've done 14 times that alone. Uh, it's our biggest month ever by pretty much any metric. Um, we're, we're incredibly excited to be here. We're hiring in San Francisco, in Seattle. Love to have you help come join build the future of Lyft, uh, and continue to, to use AWS whenever it makes sense for our business. So thank you for having me.